What's up guys, Minimate here, and today I am joined with the Smuggler. It's nice to meet you all on uh, over on Manime's channel. I, uh, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So today we're going to be doing a small video on the four anime we found this season that aren't quite getting the reputation they deserve, despite the fact that they are pretty good damn anime. Yeah, I concur. Although, um, before we get into our list of essentially the most underrated shows of the season, why don't we clarify, what, what, do, you, what do you speculate are the heavy hitters this season? Oh, Yuri on Ice, obviously, mm. um, is definitely the biggest heavy hitter. Uh, what else is there? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I Do I dare say Twin Star Exorcist? I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, so, f so far, all the gifts I've seen on on Tumblr so far have been Yuri on Ice related, so. It's just so good. I just, I just, <laughs> I, 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 I never would have expected. Uh, we got Drifters, too. Drifters is a big one. Oh, yeah. Um, I have to watch that one soon. Occultic Nine but that hmm. bugs the hell out of me. Like, nobody should be able to talk that fast. And March comes in like a lion, which is Shaft's new property this season, which is pretty good. Hmm. And then we got Keijo, which is a very heavy hitter. Oh, fuck Keijo. I mean, Pun <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> yeah. God, I, I'm sorry. Keijo is just the, the epitome of what, what's wrong it's with so anime wonderful. to me. <laughs> God. All right, so let's go ahead and start our list. So we each pick two, and the first one is going to be mine, and that is Girlish Number. Ooh. Girlish, Girlish Number, I feel like, is uh, a really good anime. They're just like, I mean, you can't even find it on the front page of Crunchyroll the next episode comes out. Like, it kind of pisses me off. But, I mean, this sh the anime is really good. I feel like it's, uh, you watch Snaf Snafu? Yeah, yeah, I watched a bit of Snafu. I think I watched the first half. Yeah, it was, it was made by the same guy, and I feel like it's Snafu... The main character from Snafu and his little sister, if they grew up and the story was about his little sister more than the main character. It's uh, it's pretty freaking hilarious. I don't know. I, I've loved it so far. Mm, I don't know. I, if I could chalk it up into a few words, I'd just say Mean Girls the anime. I think it's just Mean Girl the anime. Like, <laughs> the main character like the main character of this show is like the, the worst human being you could possibly imagine. Like, narcissistic, mean, just like cutthroat to get anything. Yeah, she she gives no fucks. Like, I don't know, like, I'd say most of the people in this show, though, are pretty deplorable human beings. Like, there's the one guy yeah. who reminds me of Fa Fa Fongo from 91 Days. Um, he's like the, the main producer for the studio or whatever, and he's just like, him and <laughs> him and the him and the other producers are just laughing it up. They're just like, ha ha, all this moe trash is gonna make all the money. And they put together this terrible preview, and then the otaku are just eating it up. And I don't, I don't know. I just find the whole thing to be very, very deplorable, but insightful. I just, I love how meta it gets, though. Sometimes, like, there's a few scenes that just like tore me up, or like, I just love the fact that at one point they're like just bashing, just absolutely bashing on. Uh, what is this called? What kind of, what kind of anime is this called? It's a. Uh, uh he's no, it's a harem. It's like novel. a light novel harem, but, like kind of fantasy yeah. thing. I shit you not, there's like literally a line in there where she says, wow, like light novels are the, some of the dumbest shit and whoever adapts them to anime are like fucking Oh yeah, dumbest. and she was like talking- And this is a light novel <laughs> She was talking shit about like... the light novel author. Like the light novel <laughs> author like invites them out to dinner and her and the other girl are like, yeah, sorry, we're kind of, uh, we're kind of already busy and the light novel is, and the light novelist is just like this fat, chunky, like sweaty guy just like clammy hands and he's like would you like to add me on this app and they're like no we don't have that app and like they leave the building yeah. and five seconds later they're like hey so do you want to add me on that app no it's just perfect because it's just like i don't know it's a really meta meta show that i mean it, i think it hits some of the more important points about how how harsh of an industry the anime industry is and it's just kind of mocking how just terrible it's gotten in some situations yeah. like the freaking the, the moe takeover and so on. So I think it's. I think it's also nice. interesting to think that, like, well, I mean, the people that are in the anime industry aren't always in to the anime industry, you know. So I think that's mm -hmm. really interesting. Like, most of these people are just like actors or producers or scriptwriters or animators that are just trying to get work. They're not necessarily interested in the material that they're making, which I think is something that a lot of people kind of overlook because making anime and all of this other shit that goes into it is work you know and it doesn't necessarily have to be fun yeah i agree with that so anyway so that's our first anime on the list the second one is going to be your pick scorching ping pong girls i actually enjoyed this show a lot more than i thought my only complaint was it's a little bit too moe for me you know yeah no i, I could definitely see your complaint about that like it is really moe i think it's interesting because it's such a low budget adaptation 
but it does so much with so little. A bunch of angry moe girls like just duking it out, ping pong fighting basically with like shonen superpowers. I don't know, just just everything about it like if you're not if you're not looking for substance, I suppose, this would definitely be the show to go for. The guy who directed this was the same guy who directed uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So the action scenes are pretty much where the whole show kind of really draws you in and all of these different moe like tropes and how each one of them has like different superpowers and just just the way just the way that it goes about actually characterizing these people and like I don't know just the random quirky abilities and kind of the way that they interact is just really cute and lighthearted and I don't I don't really expect much from it which is why I think I enjoy it so much. I feel like if if I had expectations going into this show, I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much, but I I like I mean the show's called Scorching Ping Pong Girls. Like I'm going to watch this to be ironic like and I actually ended up enjoying No, I do have to admit I, I enjoyed it too. I I I didn't I generally don't like Moe anime, and I can I can generally like I can get through some of the worst ones, but I didn't have a problem with this one. And I, like as someone who like actually plays ping pong a decent bit, like it makes me want to play ping pong so <laughs> bad. It's like I want to drop this anime and go play yeah, ping pong right much. now. <laughs> like I, <laughs> it's just, it's I wish hard. my school had a ping pong club full of hot girls. Like that 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 would have been a dream. Like yeah, at my high school it was me and my coach. So uh, you know. <laughs> ooh, <laughs> he was like a sixty five year old man. Yuri on ping pong. <laughs> There we go, man. Then that's the next big anime. We gotta pitch we, that to we somebody. Really do. Days. Now the next anime we got on the list, which is uh, another one of mine, my my second ch- choice, is All Out. Now this anime, I just, I had good expectations by it because it was by my my favorite production company, and it's just like a sports anime that's not about like, you know, a classical sport. So I was kind of like, oh, this is neat. Like it's not basketball, it's not f- football. It's it's you know, it's a uh, freaking, uh, rugby, which I don't, I've never played rugby before. Which I think might add to the reason why I actually like this show, because I, I don't know if what we're learning from this show is actually true at mm-hmm. all. Like, it could just be, like, total bullshit and yeah. not even close <laughs> to actual rugby, and I wouldn't know. But no, no, it's just like, it's like your classic kind of sports story tale. Now, obviously, there's a lot of uh, man service <laughs> in there, but I'm down for that kind of stuff. Like, I'm totally cool with man service. Like, yeah, this uh, this whole season seems to be pretty heavy on the kind of um, the yaoi bait. But um, apart from that, like, I just find Madhouse to be fascinating on how, like, niche some of their shows get. Like, it's no wonder they almost went bankrupt a few years ago. Like, who would have thought, like, to make an entire anime specifically about rugby and that there's actually a demograph for that? Like, I I wouldn't have been able to tell that. I'm just kind of... And the the fact that it's, like, a 26-episode anime, too. Like, it's not even, like, the 13 part... The 13 episodes. Oh, it is, too. It's going to be 25 episodes. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, that is insane. And the animation is just like, I mean, it. I guess the whole manly kind of like rugby player really lends itself to Madhouse's style of animation, the dark, thick lines and just the interesting character designs. I don't know. I kind of, I was reminded a lot of like Jojo when I was watching this too. Oh, like it's just, it seems, it. but the one thing, the one thing that bothers me is the main character who is essentially like a monkey boy, <laughs> like... I don't know, man. Normal people shouldn't act like that. He just, he's just he got that Napoleon complex, and every time somebody even hints at him being short, he just, like, starts screaming and yelling and, like, beating, like, literally beating the shit out of them. And I'm just, I, I don't know. That kind of takes me out of it. But apart from that, um, the whole cast is genuinely likable. Um, it follows that kind of uh, typical, like, sports, um, the sports progression, like the training, and then it introduces the first big competition and lines up these rivals. And the main character is somebody who just happens to have some innate ability because he was doing something stupid that was kind of related. Like, the main character is super strong because he just hangs off of monkey bars because he wants to get tall. Yeah. So he's just he just has super shoulder muscles. Like, it really reminds me of, like, Initial D, how, like, Takumi was just going down the hills just because he needed to deliver tofu, and it ended up making him, like, a super drift racer. So I see that happen a lot in sports anime, but not necessarily a bad thing. Now, I want to go back to the character designs you were talking about. I'm sorry, some of the character designs in this anime are just ridiculous. <laughs> like, I, like one of the main, not one of the main characters, but like one of the supporting character casts is like, has like a, literally a square face. And <laughs> every time he comes on the scene, <laughs> I've seen he's that. supposed to be like a, oh like a, like a, a, a sympathetic character. But like every time he comes on the scene, oh. I just start fucking laughing. <laughs> like his face is God, so weird. Yeah, there's like, well, there's like one guy. His his face also like there's another guy. Uh, I don't know if I if I if I'd even call him a supporting character because he like shows up like twice. 
but his face is shaped like a bean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, he's just got, like, this banana face or something like that. It's so and it's just so, like, when you compare it to, like, the kind of chiseled, muscular, like, main characters, and you just have this really off kind of model, dumb-looking face on the shot, it's just, it's amazing. I just love how, like, how contrasted he is, because, like, they'll have that, like, guy with the, uh, because he often talks to the main characters, and sometimes you'll talk to, like, some of the characters that have, like, a lot of detail into their face and shit, and it's just, like, the contrast between the two characters is massive. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just feel like, you know, you know what they're spending all the animation on? It's those fucking, it's those thigh muscles, man. <laughs> like, that's what they're saving the budget for. Nothing else. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on to our final pick, or your final pick. Oh, man, this one was a good one. Um, definitely, I'd have to say, probably the biggest sleeper of the season. Um, if not of the year, just because, like, not too many people have actually heard about it. Um, or, I wouldn't say they haven't heard about it, but they haven't necessarily started watching it. Especially on Crunchyroll, it kind of, like, it kind of triggers me, because it's, like, I actually have to search for it in the search bar, like, I can't find it anywhere. But, uh, it's called Flip Flappers. And, um, it is, it is absolutely amazing. Uh, done by the same guys who did, um, Space Dandy. The director is the guy who directed Space Dandy. And the screenwriter is the same guy who did screenwriting for Batum. Mm. Um, Space Dandy. A bunch of other really good shows that just, I, not necessarily successful shows, but just shows that had interesting progression in the plot. And just interesting concepts all throughout. So I'm really happy about the team that actually came together to work on this, and I think that it's really going to show as it picks up and kind of progresses. I can't, I can't, uh, I couldn't agree with you more on that one. I feel like this show is just so underrated. I like, I hadn't watched this until like you, you suggested we made this video, and I was going to like watch all the shows. And, like Flip Flappers, I started and like, damn, like this is my new favorite show. Like I was really blown away. Like it's, I mean, there's uh, obviously some Yuri elements in there, but it's kind of like the story itself just. It makes sense, but in a really strange way. It's it's a yeah. very different show, and I, I really love just how different it is, while also appearing to be so normal. Not to mention the art style. Oh my god, the freaking art style is unbeatable. I don't know what it is about that, just like hand-drawn kind of feel it has to it, but it works so well. It really does look and feel like like Space Dandy did, and that's why that's why I can argue that this is going to be a really big sleeper because when Space Dandy first came out, nobody really gave a shit. But then eventually it kind of picked up, and as soon as Funimation got a hold of it and it showed on Toonami, everybody just ate it up. Yeah. So, and when I was watching Space Dandy, you know, I was thinking, you know, I was like, you know what, Space Dandy's really good, but like, what 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 I need, like, it just needs more lesbians, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, like so, like and. Also, like, this show is a really good example of kind of, like, the text, the subtext, and then the meta text. Mm -hmm. The text being that there are these two, like, lesbians that go on magical adventures, basically, through portals, and they need to ga gather all of these, like, crystals that grant wishes or mm -hmm. something. But the subtext is that of, basically, like, the whole thing is kind of, um, kind of relating to how different organisms and different people perceive reality. Mm -hmm. And then there's the meta text, which is basically what this piece actually says about the anime industry, because this really does have a lot of kind of genre bending references in it. One one episode will be like kind of moe slice of life, and then it'll go to like a stark kind of horror just for one episode, and it becomes genuinely actually terrifying for that one episode. But then you go into this Mad Max setting, and it's super intense and just beautifully animated fight scenes and each one of these settings actually says something about the way that the characters feel inside of the narrative while still being references to other anime which is just amazingly creative i mean i, I don't know I, I, all i can say is yes like <laughs> i agree <laughs> i don't know i mean you just kind of cover the whole freaking thing there but yeah no i mean i really i really feel like this show is amazing and i think one of the best parts about this show is that in each each episode we go into this new world this new this new place mm -hmm. and everything changes in this world like so you never yep. know what the story is going to be like is it going to be a horror story is it going to mm. be comedy is it going to be like a fight story you don't really know until you get in there and each story is just it's so different and it works so well and I don't know I feel like these characters are just they're well written and they're the way they react to the world is mm -hmm. kind of kind of comical almost 
because you know there'll be yeah. the horror film and like let's make friends with the freaking creepy like I things and oh just, like, god well and it's really interesting too because like I mean you're you're when you're watching the episode you're like scared shitless but I don't know it's really um the way that it it's because it's not actually like it's really hard to make anime scary mm. like I think that's one thing that every horror anime will struggle with because anime is just not that scary but the way that they kind of get in like into this comfort zone and make friends with these terrifying creatures but as a viewer we're so put off by these creatures basically and there's they're just living their happy little lives it's just a really uncomfortable situation and we kind of fight it and mentally that's what creates that fear and that struggle that's internalized by the viewer so i thought that was really cool all right well this has been pretty yeah. awesome thank you so much for coming over to my channel and and doing a small video. If you guys like this kind of content, go go check him out. He's got a pretty awesome YouTube channel. Yes, this was um this was a smuggler. Uh, I, me and my friend, we run a channel. It's called Otaku News and Reviews. Um, yeah, basically just Otaku News and Reviews. Um, we're kind of we're kind of gearing up and making some new content. We've just recently kind of got on YouTube, and we're we're about the same size as Manime over here. So hopefully we'll be able to grow together and uh, do some more content like this in the future. Anyways, make sure. Uh, and you guys, anyway, you guys, wait, let me, God, I always fuck this up, like, no joke, like, I, I'm the worst with this shit, like, I cannot speak without a script. Oh, that's awesome. Anyway, you guys, this is Man Man Matt, make sure you guys stay a man, go watch that goddamn anime. And this is The Smuggler, until next time.